From the Woodshed, a casual conversation with Chase Morrill and Ryan Eldridge of Kennebec Cabin Company, the team that inspired the hit show Maine Cabin Masters. From the Woodshed is brought to you by Nelma. See the stamp, trust the quality. By Hammond Lumber, your building project partner. By Kennebec Savings Bank, helping our local community save, thrive, and grow for over 150 years. And by Hero Media Network, connecting small business with new customers. Now, from the Woodshed Studios in Manchester, Maine, it's Chase and Ryan. From the Woodshed, I'm Chase Morrill. With me, as always, Ryan Eldridge, Maggie Morrill. Hello. We are here to talk about all things cabin, all things cabin-related, all things Maine-related. Our guest today is Jared Bacon. Jared Bacon. Jared Bacon. <laughs> he Bacon that. <laughs> Our guest today is Jared Baker, and yeah, it's... A.K.A. Jedi, if you, AKA didn't, if you Jedi. didn't know. Yeah. So you can find out more about Kennebec Cabin Company and From the Woodshed at KennebecCabinCompany.com, MainCabinMasters.com, Facebook, Instagram, our YouTube channel. Check out our online store at Kennebec, shop KennebecCabinCompany.com. And this is all possible thanks to our sponsors, Nelma, Northeast Lumber Manufacturers Association, Hero Media Network, connecting small business with new customers, Hammond Lumber Company, the official building material supplier of Kennebec Cabin Company, Kennebec Savings Bank, helping our local community save, thrive, and grow for over 150 years, and our fans. Thank you all for tuning in, listening, the questions, watching the show, listening to the podcast, and yeah, putting just, up with us. Just loving us. Absolutely. It, this has been fan headquarters lately, the nonstop people in, in, in. So happy. Yeah. And then on like the um, Friends of Cabin Masters page, like the love there is just wild. You know, there's another page now too. Uh oh. Yeah, does, there's gonna be competing pages. Does your father know? I think he does. He doesn't talk about it though. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know about it, Maggie? What? The uh, the other um, non-official Cabin Masters pages? No. They're popping. There's a bunch of them. That's great. Yeah, and for those who, for those of you who missed last week. The big news is that we are now officially part of the Magnolia Network. January 6th, the changeover will happen. And if you have the DIY network now, it will automatically roll into the Magnolia Network. So no need to do anything. And you will be able to find us on Discovery Plus, the streaming service. So Cool. Yeah, new episodes are coming. I keep everybody. First question oh everybody asks, when are new episodes coming out? And I said, late, late fall. So we don't know. Oh, you even say that? See, I don't say anything. Oh, really? I don't say nothing because... We don't know. We don't know. All and right, it's official. I told the people October. No, and but they've already stopped no, no. telling people October. <laughs> no, they've told us it's official, and then something happens. Sure, sure, sure. It's like that lesson you, it takes a long time to learn as a contractor. You never, ever, ever give a date. <laughs> ever. <laughs> right? Yeah, except we'd have to. What do you mean? We give dates, and we have to stick to them. No, we get we get a done date, but you, like, say, you, I'll be able to fix that roof. You know. Oh yes, yes, yes. Because yes. it's and newsy. It's never your fault, but the supply chain. Like right now, this stuff in the boats. Like yeah. I learned the hard way. Just because if you say something, they're gonna. You, that's all people remember. It. It's true. Or even this, like this, this one. Just give me a rough idea. And I used to be okay, but now I'm like, no way. I know you're my for, good friend for, for estimates yeah. too. Or you're my family. That's what I'm saying. Or your family. But if I just say something, you're gonna remember that. Yeah. And you, yes. And bef sure. before our marriage, I would, my, my thing was I always estimated high and like, because I came in under like, you look like a hero. Oh. And if you didn't get the job, then. Pff, right, right, you know? right, right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now we're all, always on all time and at the budget. <laughs> <laughs> at least on TV. Yeah. Behind time, behind budget. It's, but no, we, we do have a lot of episodes in the bank. Oh, we got a lot of episodes. So today. when the new episodes start rolling out, they'll be rolling out good. Because this, I don't even know what season we're on, but there's three from the previous season for some reason that didn't get aired. Yeah, well, it's kind of like right now we're, we're getting started working on. So those are the start of yes. this season. Yeah, so like this next round we're starting is actually the start of the following season. But you can see how confusing it is for us. Oh, so God. yeah, bear with us, but keep tuning in. If you need a fix, to listen to the podcast, and then eventually the new episodes will start airing. And they've been play, playing the episodes over and over, I guess, on DIY. Yeah. Today was Main, Mag, main Cabin Master Wednesday. Interesting. Yeah. I saw that on the old yeah. Facebook this morning. So we went to Eva's second-to-last soccer game yesterday. Did you hear about it? Oh, I 
did I hear about it? I sent her a text last night. I went bed shopping. Uh, once again, Chase Morrow puts his foot in his mouth. Has, well, I'll let you tell the story because it's awesome. Yeah, so Eva's on the Marana Cook Middle School JV B team. And soccer team. Soccer team, soccer team. And, you know, she plays begrudgingly, but, you know, she's been playing her whole life. She has fun doing it. And so, I, you know, I was like, Eva, just score a goal, score a goal. And so I bribed her. I'm like, if you score a goal, you know, I'll get you in. Because she wants a new mattress, a bigger mattress, because Maggie and Nori both have bigger mattresses. So it's only fair. Right. But I'm like, if you score a goal, I'll get you a new mattress. Yesterday in the game, within the first five minutes, she's out there running around. She gets that goal like that. I love it. Runs over, looks right at me. I get a new bed. <laughs> That's awesome. At as she went to the game, that's the first thing she'd said when she came home. My brother doesn't know when to quit. Because if, if you guys don't know, um, in one of the episodes, you'll see that Dixie took Nori hunting, and there yeah. was a little bet made then. And, of course, Nori, 10 minutes in the woods, shot her first, and yep. probably only deer ever. Yep, yep. And she, I was like, yep, if you shoot a deer, you, I'll get it mounted for you and everything. And sure enough. I was sitting on the couch when she told me that. So the next thing I go, Google found the most expensive bed. <laughs> Sent it to Eva. Like, found a bed for you. King size, motors, electronics. But it was just, it was. That's you know, awesome. It was so funny. That's Murphy's Lot, man. Yeah. Life. But they ended up winning two to one. No, two to nothing. It was good. And that was the motivation she needed. That was it. Maybe you just sign her to a contract. Money. She, she's obviously motivated by money. <laughs> right, right. Every goal. No. But she'll, yeah. she'll play next year. The kids have been having fun because we got the pleasure of taking Fletcher to a um, Red Sox playoff game. Yeah. Big shout out to um, Kevin Hunt and our friends with Benjamin Moore. Absolutely. Uh, those guys really, really have been taking care of us. It's been a really fun time. Yeah. But Fletcher was just it yeah. was unbelievable. My voice is still messed up from it. Yeah. And we had, yeah, we had the full crew going to Boston. It was Nori's birthday, so we had Sarah and the girls ride down with us. They had a night of Boston I could see you guys got that like energy. I could see like, because you guys are on Lansdowne Street, right? When they want it. Yes. And the, well, we had been sitting there for like three innings. <laughs> it was a thirteen inning game. <laughs> Would you say that you got to kind of experience a cool part of sports, though, with the energy and stuff? I mean, I guess I don't know. And then it got really annoying that was really almost quick. A yes. <laughs> it was like cool for like thirty seconds, and then people were screaming, and it was like okay. I'm Had done with that. But it was also the same weekend as the Boston Marathon. I mean, it was a busy, it was hopping. busy city, that's for sure. But there's nothing, nothing like playoff baseball. Like, every pitch. And then in Fenway Park, it was like... Yeah, it was... It was... A, that's something we'll never forget. Absolutely. Thank you, Kevin. Thank yeah, you, Benjamin. Thank you. Hashtag 3,500 colors. Find your colors, <laughs> baby. Find your colors. Find your colors. Yeah, so the weather's been unbelievable, too. I know. Knock on wood, we've been extremely fortunate. The leaves are popping. Oh, it's crazy. And they are dropping fast, though. I was doing an interview with Rob today, and we were talking about the weather. Like, if you look past, you really can't judge me on what happened last year, what's going to happen 10 years ago, because a year ago this time, we already had two frosts. And a lot of times, we'll have a windstorm, there was no leaves. Yeah. Like, we haven't had good foliage in a while, because all these storms blow through. But we haven't, all the hurricanes pretty much went out to sea. We've had a couple rainstorms, but yeah. nothing serious. No, I think we're getting some rain this weekend, though. And then it'll probably snow. I mean, I've seen snow Don't say in that. October a bunch. No, I heard it's supposed to be unseasonably warm. Through, it's gross. Gross. Through the fall, so. Yeah. I don't like Everybody it. went. No snow and then I don't Christmas like Day dump. I'd rather it snow right now than be this warm. Me, me too. Look, we agree on something. Oh, oh yeah, come so. on. I don't like the... Your it's dad loves October. it. October. Dad Keep it coming. It. I was thinking about going and swimming also, today. also, then I don't have to do dryland, and I can go right ah, the Yeah, there we go. There's the, there's the real. I like that passion. <laughs> Start training. You gotta get you your own. We gotta get you a rope toe over there. Fletcher's got his own batting cage. We'll get you a rope toe up the hill. I don't want a rope toe. I don't like rope toes. Yeah, but you'd be on that. We'll now. get you a ski tuning station. Yeah, actually, I do need one. Of I have I have a whole bench from Colby College in my workshop. Yes. Yeah. We'll get we'll get it set up. You can go right over there, tune your skis before each meet. It makes a big difference. Tune your sister's skis. Nope. Tune Maybe your brother's skis. Nope. Maybe have downhill Dixie. will come over and give you a couple lessons because he knows what he's doing. I know how to do it. I, do. Nice. Maybe you should. Give I had Dixie to do some. it at school. Do you know like some of those waxes for like the professionals? It's like uh, 
thousands of dollars for like a like a couple grams. Really? Like it's crazy. Holy smokes. Yeah, when Get sa- ready to- <laughs> it's not just your regular old beeswax. No, it's like Thanks. it's nuts. Yeah, you try to wax my skis one time, they were like <laughs> <laughs> Well and I did I remember reading an article about cross country skiing in Maine and you know, there's quite a lot of economic disparity between southern Maine and these other places. So I think they finally passed a rule where you, all, all schools had to use the same wax because kids from different, you know, higher social economic statuses were bringing in these nice waxes. And then, you know, a kid from up in the woods, like, state sanctioned, had the grease from the bacon pan the night, night before. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Not at all. That's the way I'd roll. Whatever works best. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, we're going to take a short break, but um, coming up, we have a nice video. It's on the Little Dog Cafe shop down in Brunswick, Maine. And it's a video by our friends at Hero Media Network. Check it out, and we'll be right back with Jedi. There's a part of you that asks, like, why am I doing this? Like, why am I putting my family through this? Why am I trying this out? My family owned a bar, so I grew up in that bar. They told me not to do it. <laughs> they told me not to go into hospitality, not to own a restaurant. But I maybe... I wanted to try to prove something in a way that I could do this, that I was capable two years later, and uh, we're still still doing it. A month or two in, like I was probably short staff and didn't realize it and wasn't keeping up with the coffees. And I was next to this lady who was at the coffee bar and she was going to one, it was empty. She went to the second one and it had grinds in it. And then the last one she went for, she like sipped it and it was cold. She just set down her drink and said, everything is wrong and just walked away. You just got to accept that you don't know everything and you got to learn from each other and finding the right team is super essential to the success of the coffee shop because you're not going to be able to do this on your own. I appreciate my team every day. We put our blood, sweat, and tears in this place, and everybody, the, the, the team members, our staff, they, they all want to have the same thing. You can see the evolution of relationships here. We see the human connections that are created here. It's nice to be able to provide that for people. And uh, yeah, it's nice to be a part of something bigger than yourself. All right, and we are back with Jedi. Hey, Jedi. How's it going? Excellent. What have you been up to? Um, roofing. Yeah. Roofing. A Ro- couple roofs. Sweating and, today. Yeah. Um, yeah, how much? Just up and about. And yeah. Uh, water, coffee, or beer? Um, beer, please. And it's not beer. It's world. It's Cabin Master Famous Dash. Dash. I, um, I a, love the Give dash. us an overview on it. <laughs> I will. Yes, I have tried a couple of these, and uh, they are delicious. My mic be open. Yes, um, Dash just had a p- couple big promos, huh? Yeah, um, an event this past weekend up at uh, the Stratton Plaza, and then one at Saddleback, which was awesome, uh, with the Mallet Brothers. Oh, nice. Uh, the place was packed, and they sold out of... Well, everything they brought with them, pretty much. So That's a good problem to have. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a good response. So, now we was, we kind of described Dash last week, but it's you know Erica and her brother, right? Yeah, came up with it. And it's how many flavors do they have? Three at the moment: um, a plain, a cranberry, and a blueberry. Cranberry. Yep. Um, I love the blueberry, but I think I like the cranberry a, a little bit is, better. Is cranberry in the woodshed? Um, it's on the outside bar, Sometimes, I believe. Yeah. Yep. I haven't had the cranberry yet. Yeah, it's on the outside bar. It's more of a dry, tart yeah, taste. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. It's I, so yeah. good. Yeah, I like it a little better. Nice. Um, we were experimenting with the stuff uh, 
or just going around selling to different places, but we were down in the tap room, and we were sitting there, and Larry and Steve, we were kind of doing, like, Cape Cods. Yeah. With the cranberry dash, you know, on ice, and yeah, it was pretty tasty. I bet. Um, did you stay at the Buccane? We did, yep. Uh, it was beautiful up there this weekend. Oh, I bet. Yeah, yeah it was awesome. Popping colors, yep. neon. Yep. How, how was the neighborhood? Neighborhood was good. Quiet? Good, yep. Wendy was very quiet, and... The neighbors all waved and said hello. Nice. Perfect. Yeah, it was a nice weekend up there. She was probably down in Burgundy after the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you stay but, up to Rangeley too? Yep. Well, actually, we stayed um, at the Buccaneer Friday night and then uh, went up to see Dixie and Rangeley on Saturday. Oh, nice. Did the event up there. And then Erica went back Sunday and raced up Sugarloaf. Shh. Those amazing, Woo! amazing. Um, <laughs> yeah, she finished. Uh, she finished like fourth, um, racing up the mountain in her oh. age group, and then like, oh, like, get out of here. Yeah. Oh no, first in her age group, and then fourth overall in the women's. Don't they know what that ski lifts are for? What the hell's wrong with them? <laughs> yeah. yeah, take a snowmobile or a ski lift to the top. Yeah. It still blows my mind every Wednesday. I come in and the Harry, the Harry of the running club, is getting ready. Like, how awesome is that? Like. They were out running till 8 o'clock last night. Uh, they did kind of a little field trip, and they went to Jamie's Pond yep. and ran the trails around there. But, yeah, there's a and good to drive that. 15 or 20 of them that they yeah. do 5K. Man, oh, man. They just opened a bunch of mountain biking trails over off Kearns Hill Road. Oh, did they? Yep. Oh, nice. And it connects up with the reservoir over in Hollowell, I guess. Yep. Yeah, those trails drop right here across 202. Yeah. Um, snowmobile trails in the wintertime. Yeah. Or winter winter running for, yeah. they'll be out there. for the hardcore. There's sometimes you'll be on the snowmobile and you'll be moving right along and, and there'll be like one of the fat tire bikes yeah. riding the snowmobile trails. And it's a little hairy at times because they've got their headphones on and they're just pedaling oh, away, yeah. no clue. And <laughs> you come around the corner and yikes, it's, it's a little dangerous, but I mean, it's a perfect spot. You know, the trails are all packed down. I, yeah. I understand why they'd want to ride on them, but... For all you fat tire bikers and runners, be careful on the snowmobile trails. Wear your uh, blinking lights. Wear your blinking lights. and We just did a, an arrival out of camp, and the, they had uh, fat tire electric bikes. Yeah. It's like, man. He had all the toys. He, he had, had all the toys, yeah. yeah. He had those little, like, plastic. They look like at Cabela's. It looks like a toy boat, but it's like, you know, it's like a bathtub. And he had a little electric engine on it, and like it, it got up and went. Really? Yeah. I actually had to call him today to ask him a question about some conduit. Is it? Well, I talked to the producer. I might bring up. He has chainsaw motors on some bikes. No, oh, really? yeah, little. Uh, yeah, he had those on the camp. Oh Jesus! My father and his brothers, uh, my uncles, they did that their whole lives. They'd take an old chainsaw and put it on ten speed, <laughs> and they'd turn the handlebars upside down, and they'd, yeah, I mean, those, oh, yeah, those things fly. I mean, it's same thing. Yeah. Would you just like hold it like that, or like where they mount it? You know, mount it. You know, you could. You know, they'd have brackets or whatnot, and mounted right in the center. Um, your throttle cable, you just run to your chainsaw motor. <laughs> And your sprockets run the same, right. yeah, you know, change out a few little pieces. But, yeah, yeah you could do 45, 50 miles an hour with a, <sighs> with a good chainsaw motor. <laughs> no, thanks. That's scary. Yeah. What's going on? This weather affects hunting season, doesn't it, for you? A lot. Yeah, it really does. Um, it's warm, you know. It's so hot. It's, yeah, it's really hot and unseasonably seasonably, um, warm. But, uh, yeah, the, the birds, they've got no reason to migrate south. You know, they have no reason to get up and fly out of these little pockets um, that they're sitting in. Um, but, you know, it's, it happens year in, year out. Yeah. You never know. But it's so, it's you know, it's it's not cold in the mornings, but it's cool enough where, like, the uh, mist on the lakes and then, you know, at the beach especially, it just rolls out and then you see the islands and just, you know, by the end of the day, it's gone. But it's so beautiful in the morning. Yeah, um, it's a little dangerous in the mornings. Um, two days ago on the way out to... To the Lefebvre camp, um, the fog was so thick coming off the lakes, oh, like yeah. I, you couldn't see twenty feet in front of you driving. It was it was pretty bad the whole way out there. Yeah, went out through like Puddle Duck and um, Summer Haven and whatnot. But I was talking to Cam Brosho. I was out with the uh, Post today, and they they went out on a hunt in Ohio last week in a game oh, reserve, and they expected to get like five or six. Each person get like two deer, and they said they didn't get hardly anything because it was so warm. Yeah, they had a great time. Yeah, and then if you go moose hunting right now, like 
it could, that could affect everything. Yeah, even if if you down one and it's it's an hour or two before you're able to properly take care of it and get it on ice and and same with like ducks and geese and stuff like that, partridge, you know, any of the game birds. Um, within 20 minutes, blowflies start in if it's over 40 degrees. So you, you've got to be ready to, yeah. to take care of your animals as, as soon as you as soon as you down one. Just like a power outage at the grocery store. <laughs> You got X amount of time to get the groceries out of the freezer. That's what I deal with. <laughs> Sarah got her moose today. Congratulations. She sent us a picture. Was, yeah. Was, uh, did she have the permit? I think or? her dad did. Her dad? Her, yeah, oh, dad nice. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, that's a good, good trip for her. Yeah. Yeah. It's the season. There's a lot of uh, roadkill right now, too. Everything's on the move. Yeah. Oh, I never thought about that. It's um, not an old wives' tale, but an old farmer's tale of the, the winter to come. You know, like the squirrels are... Really oh, roadkill! I've never heard that yeah, one. Yeah, like they're they're moving and they're they're getting ready for a heavy winter. Ah, I've heard the caterpillars oh, size the, of their stripe. The woolly bears, yeah. And then how high the nests are off the ground. Yep. Be- bees nests. Bees nests. Definitely. And this year, I've seen probably five or six monster hives way up in trees. I also saw some woolly bears with some big. Yes, we're gonna be. We, we might be in for it. Look we, out, we could be. Saddleback. <laughs> we could be. Yeah, here you we heard come. it here, second. Yeah, <laughs> and take your snowmobile to the woodshed. Yeah, trail comes out right back. Who's ready for snowmobile season? And it's the first trail groomed every day. <laughs> <laughs> and are the uh, smelt shacks coming back? Yes. I don't see why not. Good. I mean, good. All right. Yeah. You heard that here first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's we part. will be smelting out That's, back. If anyone from the town's walk, watching, I got to propose to get on the next board meeting. So, <laughs> But we do have permission for the smelt shacks. Yeah. Nice. They were great last year. Yeah. They're fun. And we're having one bigger smelt shack, too. Right, right, right. So, yeah. 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 Try to get. Well, I kind of heard that yeah, the, the other day. Kind of like saddle, the thing at Saddleback. Like the big tented. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. What is, is it? Not a Quonset hut, but a, that, right? Quonset, like, yeah. Yeah. What's uh? What I had heard thirty by thirty. Yeah, thirty by thirty with fifteen foot tall. Nice. So we'll have to build walls in it, but we can probably get eight picnic tables in there. Yeah. But Quonset Hut applies to any half circles, right? Does it? Yeah. That's kind of what I always Quonset. assumed. Quonset. Yep. If that's an old Indian term. I don't know. I, th- I, I made that up, <laughs> but I think it is. <laughs> Maggie, come on, you know. No. Break out that Google. <laughs> yeah. We got a ways to go the way the weather's going. Yeah. Hopefully. Absolutely. I'm not ready for cold yet. It's, I know. It, it's worse when it just goes boom like that. My mother's dock is still in. And it's like, why pull it yet? You know, right? it's just, I mean, the water's still tolerable. Water, it's warmer yeah. than the air. Yeah. It is, yep. So I'm like, all right, no rush. No rush, mom. No rush. Next podcast, we're like, oh, it's snowing today. This <laughs> sucks. We should have, we, we jinxed us. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but we're ready. We're ready. Yeah. We're, we're on ready. a good stretch, too. Like, we got some fun builds going on, like kind of a different path we're on. We really can't say much, but a lot a new, of new things going on. I was going to say a new path. New new things going on. <laughs> not like it's anything. No, yeah. No, 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 no nothing not new not path. Not at all. We're on the same path. Yeah, yeah. but I, so I did, I, I took care of demo day by myself today <laughs> at that other camp, you know, day two. Yeah. And Cam, yeah, we, Cam got all the posts in, so. It's yeah. amazing when, like, he comes in at Jedi, this job site, you know, Jedi hasn't been there yet because you usually come day two and it's demo, but it's a new build. And Tetanol Post is there. The lawn's already built. Septic's in. Everything's in. And like he was there. You never even know he's there. Now we can just go build on it. Like it's not going to be a mud pit. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Sir, half circle driveway, plenty of parking. Like it's, it's pretty nice. It's a good one. He might be referring to us doing some new builds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> new builds. Yeah. Takes all types. Which we've done. We've done in the past, you oh. know, you know, with the uh, Jeff's camp, yeah, the right. Bigford camp, my brother's the, camp, yeah, but yeah, yeah, and we, we have techno posts with decks and stuff. But yeah, it's exciting, exciting times. Yeah, I mean, there's something to be said about it. putting that roof on today. I mean, everything was perfect. You just it's right there. <laughs> it's right there. If you start, <laughs> you know, straight square level and plumb on the ground, you're gonna have that up on the Absolutely. roof line. Absolutely, it's yeah, it's, that's a cool. One. That, that's a really cool job project too. Yeah, I mean we were we were uh, everybody we had nine days on it. That's nuts. Nine yeah. days. It started last Monday. Right, chipping. Chipping started last Monday. Nine days. <laughs> wow. Wait till you see this episode. It's a good one. It's a cool little design. Nice yeah. little spot. 
Yeah, and Pinnacle, Pinnacle Tree has helped us out a lot. Yeah. Dropping some monster pines for us this year. Yeah. Don't get used to nine-day builds, though. This is just... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's everybody. Again, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of making do with what we have. Right. The right. permitting process... You know, the permitting process this year has been really slow. Oh, God. And, you know, supply chains have been wacky. So, Did wait. you see the, all the boats out there? It's nuts. It's crazy. It's nuts. Yeah. But luckily, uh, we're putting our orders in early for Kennebec Cabin Company, so we'll have plenty of... For Christmas? Plenty of stuff for Christmas. Yeah. There's all kinds of cool stuff. We even got more st- cool stuff. Oh, yeah. we'll talk, that comes at the end of the show. Yeah. But Susie found a spot. Yeah, she was she was scratching for her bed over there. <laughs> so Matt Morrill texted me today, my cousin. Yeah. He was um, looking for workers, and so he was going back a few job applicants, and he came across Dakota Douglas, and called him up, and he's like, "Oh, sorry, he's working for working for your cousin," <laughs> but apparently, he is building a cabin across the street from Sarah and Richard, up in the woods. Dakota. Well, yeah. So it's the house I grew up in on Churchill Road, uh-huh. and my aunt and uncle bought it years and years ago. But there's a uh, you know old woods trail that goes up to Spectacle Pond. And isn't that frisbee golf over there? Yeah, that's a little further down. But, but yeah, Burnsboro. Yeah, and there's another one. one. Yeah, there's another one there. Uh, yeah, can't Welcome to the neighborhood. Right? <laughs> yeah, Dakota said he's got like 30, 40 acres up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He bought off his grandfather yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But I, my uh, Aunt Sarah and Martha came out the other day, and they, she mentioned it, and I hadn't made the connection small at world, all. Huh? Yeah, such a small world. Yeah, he's in. T- he's surrounded by all morals now. <laughs> Lucky he guy. He probably didn't know that when he applied for the job, <laughs> right? Yeah, he's a, he's a good he's a good kid. Good yeah. kid. Yeah. yeah, he just wants to work and wants to learn and got a lot of knowledge to begin with. And yeah. yeah, because tell him yesterday, just listen. All the old guys, they got all the tricks. Yeah. Stuff you will not find in a book. No. <laughs> Stay in school, kids, but you gotta, you, there's a lot to learn uh, without a book. Age does breed wisdom, I guess. A little I bit. know. I'm trying to think of any tricks or, tr- you know, tricks of the trade that I could. It's hard to, like, think of them off the top of your head. It's, like, more like when you're in the moment doing it. You're yeah. like, hey. Well, you don't think it's a trick because you've been doing it right, you know, right, 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 right. all the time. Yeah. Like so, the wedge thing, you know, like when we do the wedge. So just something you do a lot. and then Yeah. Something as uh, simple as spitting on a screw. Right, you right, know, right. If you're ever having trouble and, and you're splitting a piece of wood that you're trying to screw or nail, uh, yeah. a little bit of spit on that. Oh, I know what I, sh- <laughs> I, know what I showed him yesterday. We were bringing the rough cut siding across, and I was like, oh, let's, we're going to level across the doorway. And he's like, trying to hold it. I go, no, just put your, pe- put your pencil in there. You know, put the pencil in, set the level on it. He's like, oh, my God, that's amazing. Like, <laughs> you would have thought I was Picasso. <laughs> But you know something like that, you don't think about it. But it's so easy, like just. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. It's kind of like going on Pinterest, like we like to do. Get <laughs> different... Tips and tricks. <laughs> thousands and thousands of ideas and tips and tricks. And... Right. If only you could think of them. Uh, for me, anyways. And it's... Write them down and study them. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Main cabin master's book of wisdom. Ooh. That'd, That'd be a good one. That would right? be a good one. We just uh, get a hashtag, right, Maggie? What? <laughs> What's your hashtag? Get a hashtag, now you get a book. No, you hashtag. Where, this going? Where did you get hashtag from? Hashtag tips of the trade. And so every time you put in a tip, it would get, right? And then at the end, you compile them all. Is that not how it works? That, that seems like a really complicated way to do it. Well, you could make it work, though. Right? Yeah, hashtag tips of the trade. If there's somewhere we could all text them to. Hashtag MCM tips. Why are you texting hashtags? (laughs) She's definitely not paying attention to our conversation. (laughs) No, she is. She's got it. (laughs) I'm with her. You're definitely not texting hashtags, but you send the tip, we'll hashtag it, or someone hashtag it and put it online with something. Yeah, so then they all get compiled. To to your Facebook. Also, that already definitely exists as a hashtag. Well, I'm sure it does, but... How many hashtags have you started? None. <laughs> I said hash- hashtag Doug the Plumber, and that was another one. Uh, is a, yeah. Doug has a million tips oh, and God. tricks of the trade. Doesn't he? Yeah. Constantly. New ones. Yeah. But comes with time. Good old Doug. Another Wisdom. Ball. Wisdom. <laughs> I know I feel bad at um, two. Ki- Doug wasn't on this last cabin. I kept talking about it. I was like, am I going there? I'm like, uh-huh. 
I go, I'll, I'll bring you there. You know, it's like, oh, they know they have a, they have an outhouse. They love it. <laughs> bring him there for the fishing. Like, I, when I'm out there, I'm like, these guys are amazing. Like, one of the cabins we're on, there was no kitchen. They literally cooked outside all the time. They said they have Thanksgiving out there. I'm like, damn, my family wouldn't even last to the appetizer. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Seriously, back outside. Yeah, and and they're doing it again this year yeah. after we yeah. finish. Yeah, right? yeah, that's yeah. A, that's definitely their goal. No kitchen, no bathroom. They just they want the sleeping space, and they'll cook outside. And I have a theory though. After seeing that place, they're gonna they might want to go inside more. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it is cool. Yeah, but like I mean, you could deep fry turkey or smoke it, right? Yes. They, yeah, and and my family camp. That's what it always was. the 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 main camp was just was just there for, with a couple beds in it. Um, all growing up, there was a camper here, uh, an RV here, a camper here. You know, everybody in the family all just had campers and RVs all around the in tents. There were platforms. Right up up back here, there was a, a platform that somebody just had claimed every summer for their tent spot. Yeah. You know, it wasn't, there's no real acti- inside activities unless it's pouring rain, but. Yeah, I mean, that's really what they're looking for, too. Just, you know, covered area so you don't have to put the tarp up. My father was a blue tarp magician. <laughs> <laughs> they're handy and they will keep you dry. It had a lot of talents. He, would, I mean, as soon as rain, he would have that tarp up. He would make saunas out of tarps. I mean, just, yeah. Saunas. Saunas. He would have been in heaven with all the lumber tarps we get. Remember when we first started working here, they, they wouldn't give us oh, a yeah. lumber tarp? Yeah, yeah, they would yeah. not give us one. But Ta- we, yeah, times we, have changed. Yeah, we go through so much material. It's there. Yep. They're everywhere. So your dad, I didn't know your dad was known for the blue tarps, but I knew I knew he was um, known for running electrical wire everywhere. Yeah, using it for everything. Carpets for drive, carpets for driveways and stuff. Yeah. And um, old electrical wire for tying down stuff. Yeah, Definitely. And a beret. That's the things I remember. <laughs> I remember asking Ashley straight forward, did your dad fish on the other side of the machine? The tree? <laughs> when I first was so bad at me. I'll never live that down. No. Nope. Answer's no. That's right. <laughs> hey. Proof's in the pudding. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. um, do you have any questions? Already, yes. All right. <laughs> Question time. Don't doubt my. Woohoo! Never. Is that uh, trivia? Is that a list of trivia? Yeah. Yes. That's from an original uh, So You Think You Know Main trivia oh, yeah? game. Does every guest get to answer one question? Oh, we can. If you want. Maggie will pick out one for you. I, yeah, I love trivia. You, and you are also extremely lucky. I'm slightly lucky, yep. Yeah. Yep, I, yeah. Chad, I was telling me this morning, I'd stop in at the convenience store. Uh, yeah, I do play more. I, oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'm, yes, never, yes, yes. I'm never going to be ahead. I just enjoy scratching a ticket every now and then or, you know, pulling a slot machine or yeah. playing a game of poker or I love uh, gambling. I, I, <laughs> I love it. Not uh, in a bad way. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. If, if I've got it, I'll, I'll do it, you know. I'm never going to lose my life to gambling. I can promise that but um yeah yeah friday morning i bought a ticket and won 500 bucks um that afternoon i bought another one hit a hundred man trick cash that in bought one more hit another hundred i hit 800 on friday just in scratch tickets in in random stops oh ran- not the same one just random stops you know cash same in. ticket uh yeah same ticket and actually man. justin so Friday morning, I showed my five hundred dollar winner because it was on the way to work, yeah. you know, or Thursday morning or whatever. Um, yeah, showed it to uh, Justin. He went and he bought the same game at a completely different store, and hit a, and hit a five hundred dollar winner. But when I win a chicken dinner, yeah, I've ne- I think the most I've ever won is like a hundred dollars on a t- scratch ticket. Yeah, that's got to feel pretty exciting. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and they give you that right there, right? That's not over the benchmark. Is yeah. there a benchmark you have to five ninety nine and under? You can do at most um, like supermarkets and stuff like that. But um, yeah, last fall I it's a similar thing, but it was with thousand dollar winners uh, on the way to work. I I bought a ticket. Um, had it above the visor. We were we filmed all day. Um, yeah. we were let it marinate. Let it marinate. <laughs> Came here, um, parked. I scratched it, and thousand dollar winner. 
I was like, well, I got a little extra money this week, so I went to JNS across the way. I bought the same game, another thousand dollar winner, in the same day within eight hours, two different stores. Well, actually, Mulligans for the first one, yeah, or and then JNS for the second one. Man, what'd yeah. you what'd you do with your five hundred winning? You, I bought a shotgun. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yep. I bought a new twenty gauge. Um. Yeah, I figured hey. instead of gambling in a way, I'd, I'd uh, purchase something I'm going to use. Right, 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 right. Um, I took it uh, bird hunting with Dixie this weekend, and uh, yeah, bought it from DNL Market right up in Smithfield. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, those guys, Louis and yeah, yeah. the Vasveries, yeah. the Vasveries. <laughs> yeah, a real Italian too. If you go there, like good sandwich, huge sandwiches. If you if you're up in the Smithfield, Oakland area, um, DNL Market, um, the sandwiches are really good. Yeah, but. Right. The main's not quick before the questions. You know where the good sandwiches are. Every job site, you know where, like the place is. Like, yes, the container. We were going to Big G's, you yes. know, um, D and L up there in, in that area, and yeah. Ted's when we were there. And, and when the film crew comes, they like, "Oh God, we gotta go to Damon. We gotta go here. We gotta go there." Damon's <laughs> Whippers. <laughs> like sandwich shops aren't a thing out west too. That was so weird. Like, there's not like the mom and pop sandwich shop. You know, it's like yeah. you know, Subway or Quiznos or like. Yeah, can I can I tell you my favorite in the area, and I love all of them. I love most of them, but um, the variety store out um, in Monmouth. Yeah, uh, on the with the bakery up, on the left the hand stop. side, the Quick Stop. Like, yeah, just down from TJ's. Yeah, they have a sandwich called the Super Hog. All right, <laughs> and, and you actually good. you kind of think of like a um, a, a Dagwood from Damon's or Whippers, yeah. and how like stuffed and loaded they are. But they come on like a three-quarter cooked 12-inch fresh dough pizza dough. So it's they cook the pizza dough pretty much three-quarters yeah. of the way. So it's still soft, yeah. crunchy on the outside. And then they fill it full of Dagwood ham Italian. Cross between a ham Italian and a Dagwood with pizza dough crust. I mean, the thing is, is huge. It's called the Super Hog. The Super Hog, but it is awesome because all the vegetables. I know, what are, I'm, I know what I'm getting this weekend. All the veggies. It's like a ham Italian, but yeah. it, it's got your bacon, and your lettuce, and yeah. your mayo. It's a cross between a Dagwood and, a, and, a, and an Italian, Damn. but on a, a warm pizza dough. Yum. Yep, the Super It's all hog. about the bread. Yeah. It is. It's a, yeah. But. Fletcher will eat it with me. Oh, <laughs> they're awesome. They're awesome. <laughs> Daughter's rolling up her nose. I know. <laughs> All right, are we ready for the questions now? It's called a super garden without meat. <laughs> okay, can we, fo- can we get back on topic here, people? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> this question is from at K Smagm. Um, generally speaking, how late in this s- season can you do construction slash renovation? How early in the spring can your work begin? We can go 365 days a year. We don't want to. We don't want to. We don't want to. But it is possible. Uh, there's just certain things you got to to do in preparation for all the the, the miserable weather. But yeah, um, you can you can do it all any day of the week. You can do it all, but it's hard to start a project in the middle. Of, you know, like if we're smart, we'll get a camp started. But to go out in the middle of February and actually start on a project, yeah, I, I mean, think that would be. It seems like a lot of the good framing Brutal. crews in Maine, they try to, they'll get, they'll frame a house starting in the April, you know, as soon as it thaws, they'll have the foundation poured, and then they'll try to get one more framed up for the winter so they can work through the winter inside. Yes. Yeah, there's there's an ideal situation, and then there's do what you got to do to get it <laughs> to get it done. Yeah. And then when you're a carpenter, you frame your own stuff in the winter outside. Yep. Right. First job we all did together, we outside oh, we all went along. It was cold. I'll never forget it. Chopping it, ice. It was January, up on that metal roof, and you came at some point throughout the morning and was like, got this phone call, or I don't know <laughs> if it's a joke or a scam. <laughs> Do you guys want to be on TV? Yeah. I'm pretty sure Dixie and I just heaved our tools off the roof. We were like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> Little did we know. Little do we know. Roofs in January. Yeah, I'd still, still be doing them. <laughs> <laughs> that one was so good. That was the last real good winter we had. Oh, and those compressor hoses. That, they were freezing up so that bad, was, that yeah. job site. That Remember, was brutal. We had a competition with the crock pot every day. And it was so cold. We, we, put, we built the door on the tr- We left the back of the trailer open, 
built the door and had heaters in there, and you have to put all your extra clothes on top. Yeah. Oh. We'd have the crock pot going, and, and the edges were frozen and cold. Yeah, that was that was rough. We, I mean, we got fancy after a while. Like, we were making chilies and putting, like, the buns on top, <laughs> and the buns were cooking. Like, it was fun. And it was. That job was just far enough away from anywhere going to get a hot lunch. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had to bring the hot lunch. All right. That was on topic. Sure. <laughs> uh, this question is from Michael Green. What style of interior wood paneling do you prefer? Shiplap, tongue and groove, or beadboard? Well, I don't, I don't really have a preference, I don't think. Um, the wider, the better. It uh, speeds the job up a little bit. Um, and it, it all it depends if it's number one or number four. You know, uh, the, the shiplap goes together a lot easy, even if it's four and warped. If, if you're doing tongue and groove and, and you're getting the number three and number four, it goes together a lot harder. Um, just makes the job a, a last a lot longer. But um, they all look good, you know, and, and you can pickle them. You yeah. know, Chase's... Uh, Taught me one thing, and that's pickling. Get pickled. <laughs> Get pickling. Not like you used to in college. It's a whole new thing. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, no, they uh, they all they all look good. It's just um, it just depends on the job, I suppose. Yeah, it, yeah, it depends on the situation and too. the availability and like if we're behind if we're behind schedule and we want to get stuff done, you give us the one by ten ship lap because we can crank it out. Yep. You know, when you're taking up ten inches at a time on a wall as opposed to four inches at a time, six inches, it's uh, yeah, it's a lot faster. Yeah, gets you on to the next project uh, but it, that much quicker. If it's East and White Prime, we're pretty much happy. Yeah, thanks, Noma. Yeah, <laughs> but I think, and I think too, like for a more finished look, we typically go with a V match. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Like, but we use it for everything. Oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. But like, yeah, we'll sheath walls with anything. But if you know, I think the good thing too is that it locks together and it's a little bit more tight of a yep. seam. You can kind of hide the nails if you want. I think one of the hardest things for us to do is. It's all pine, so you got to mix it up. You know that's why, you know, you guys will flip it and have a flat, flat for ceilings. And if you want to get crazy, you can do a bead board or chair rail. And yeah. Like you guys just did a camp which hasn't been seen yet, and it, all four sides were tongue and groove. Oh yes. And you guys cranked. Yes. Played some yeah. dice games. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Wild dice. That went quick, didn't it? It did. Yeah. End match. That stuff's called right. I think End match. End match. We need to get some more of that. That. Yep. That stuff was nice. It's almost like that sounds like some movie in a series. <sighs> like doing flooring on a wall. End match. End match. <laughs> Episode Avengers seven. And, and you know what I, I just watched last night? A end new end net, uh, Amazon Prime series. I think this is off topic. It totally is. <laughs> end match. But it's um, All or Nothing or something like that. Sounds well, you know, like they a gambling follow, movie. They follow a sports team through a season. And this season they're following the Toronto Maple Leafs. Oh, nice. Yeah. I haven't won a Stanley Cup in like 100 years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, Tag. Yeah. And then the whole th- thing with COVID, how you know, it kind of got separated out into Canadian teams and U.S. Yeah. teams. Yeah. I've only watched the first episode. And I was probably half asleep. But. This is great, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, it might be worth checking did, out. Did you watch? I know I asked. Uh, we watched it. Uh, I think we were working up in uh, Moose Luke there at one point in one of the houses. But The Last Gladiator. Did you ever watch that when we were staying away? The goon with, one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Chris Nyland. Yes, yes, Michael yes. Nyland. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Four are days we, in October is really good too. All right. Are we ready for the next question? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. Real good. Okay. This question is from Lake Queen eighty four. Will there be a Jedi camp renovation in the future? Um. I. You know. I don't know. I. It's. Um. It's first, I gotta own a camp. <laughs> Which I don't, you know, I camp out of my truck every now and then, but... Have you been talking about some off-the-path stuff? Something. Uh, I, mean, I still fun. want to do a boathouse. Yeah. That, w- that would be it. If it were to happen, it would be a little pontoon houseboat. Yep. Um, on the water is where I want to be. Yep. Um, other than that, it's it's going to be off in the middle of a 200-acre piece of woods. But, yeah, uh, houseboat. Houseboat or a bus. Yeah. I've, um, yeah. Yeah. Go houseboat. Houseboat. Just It'd be cool. Just got to find the right one. Like that one yep. up in Moosehead was awesome. That's a good and, and good w- vision one to see. We could take the base and the idea of that one and we, yeah. Yeah. We could. Make it awesome. We could do something really cool with that with that style. You know, and, and the thing about that one was it was made out of the, the propane tanks, the gas tanks, five-eighths thick 
steel, he leaves it in all winter long, you know. Six feet of ice doesn't do a thing to the, That's to the base awesome. of that boat. That's nuts. You Set know? it and forget it. Set it and forget it. Leave it and believe it. And, and he built it just enough so it could be trailered. Yep. He built a custom trailer for it, but ideally you don't want to move it off wherever you're at. But if you wanted to, you could, you know. Yeah. That's it. Hey, uh, suburban propane. Now we need a deal on some <laughs> 24 foot, 28 foot tanks. Well, oh, that'd be a monster. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We're, so we're working. Stay on tuned. It. Yeah. 24 foot uh, houseboat. That'd be killer. Jet ski up to it. Yep. With the diving board. Yeah. I've got the frame for the diving board. Got the diving board. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Okay. Um, this one is from 2010 Blue Dash Eyes. Blue Dash Eyes? Yes. As I'm drinking a Dash Blueberry. <laughs> are those like their <laughs> hat? Those are like online names? Yeah, I think there's their Instagram handle. Oh, nice. All right, Blue Eyes, what do you got? If you could choose a theme song for your main cabin master's crew, what would it be? That's a good question. Oh, there's so many good songs. Um, like, as far as like following us around all day, or just like a, like a. So Fletcher's big thing now is walk on songs. Yeah, oh, I know mine. He's like, yeah. what, would, what, what would you walk on song? Fletcher's would be the immigrant I bet, song. I bet Jedi's and I would be the same thing. Tweezer reprise. A reprise would be huge. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nothing, that's 30 yeah. seconds to just get pumped up. Yep. Um, but honestly, mine, I've, I've been asked the question before if I could choose one theme song or one song that followed me in a cloud everywhere I walked, uh, would be Jay Z's Blueprint 2. Blueprint 2. I don't know if I know that one. I, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to listen to it. It's, uh, yeah, it's really, really good. Uh, yep. Nice. I was thinking the other day, too, it would be fun to make an app. That on your phone, if you're, ideas. yeah, how, if you were walking around, you'd always have a theme song playing. And then if you stopped, you know, it would stop playing. But like, if you were in a meeting, you got up to go somewhere, there would be a theme song. Get you pumped you. right up for everything yeah. you do. <laughs> for me, that would be, ever. that would be <laughs> Blueprint too. That is the worst. <laughs> well, no, because it'd be weird <laughs> if you like, like if you're sitting in a meeting, all of a sudden you're like, hold on, I got to go. And you press your phone to start playing. And then, you know, you're, but if it just automatically <laughs> senses motion, it just starts playing That'd be the as weird you're walking part. out of the room. That'd be the weird part, having <laughs> yeah. to turn it on. Yeah, yeah but well, if you well, didn't yeah. have to, it just boom, automatically. <laughs> no. I think they have, like, wireless earbuds, and you just be like, hey, Siri, play. Well, yeah. I know, but <laughs> to automate it a little more. Yeah. All right. I like it. Again, I was thinking about Fletcher and his walk-on song when he's playing. Apple Watch. Well, yeah. Fletcher's yeah. immigrant song, that's pretty good. Yeah. So he, Fletcher has a wiffle ball stadium built in front of our house. Nice. Yeah. It's got a green monster. It's got bleacher seating. Nice. 80 and over are free. <laughs> we, we, I might have helped Ashley put um, a bureau into his batting cage today. <laughs> ah, yep. I didn't realize what it was until afterwards. I walked in, I was like, oh, that's his batting cage he built. Yep, yep. Nice job, Fletch. Yeah, he's very industrious. You didn't build it. Yeah, he did. I I helped him assemble the frame, but he's done. He's done some. No, I helped him assemble the frame. You helped him as well. Hey, but he and, built it. And back to how pumped is he on baseball right now? Oh, he after, loves after, it after going down to the games. Yeah, he I mean, even before he just. I didn't realize he. I mean, he loves baseball. Yeah. Yes. He yeah. was heckling the. I, I'd never seen him like he. Was, <laughs> he was on them. Like yeah. it was pretty cr- neat to see. Like that's all. Yeah. Loves it. and like Bobby Dahlbeck's his favorite player. Like rookie. <laughs> like not the craziest name, but just knew everything about him. Yeah. It's what do you say to him? Something. Hey, so. Hey, so and so. Oh, hey, Cruz. How you cook your meat? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like that is brilliant. <laughs> Before he's like, Hey, Pala, heads or tails? <laughs> just enough to be like. Yeah. Get him questioning. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That is all we have time for for questions today. All right. If you want a Back trivia on track. question, I can ask you one time. Do you want a trivia question? I uh, no, I mean if we're out of time. Yeah. No, we can we've got time for trivia. We'll, we'll we'll find out. Time. Yeah. Okay. These are ones I don't know the an- I don't know the answer to half of them, but it's going to be tough. I'm, I'm not good at trivia. I like it. Okay. Right, 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 right. What sort of plant is Jacob's cattle? 
Jacob's Cattle is. Um, oh, that's the. Uh, they mean Indica or Sativa. <laughs> Jacob's Cattle. <laughs> No, it's it's one of the it's isn't it one of the bushes that has the purple uh Juniper? It's like the wool. Like you go through uh not no, burdox. Like, no, not burdox, nope. It's it's uh, a nettle. Nope, I can't tell no. you what Jacob's cattle is. It's a bean plant. It's a bean bean, bean plant. Hmm. Huh. Well, something. <laughs> I mean, these days, any neighbor's going to say Of course it is, yeah. yeah. You know, well, like, I'm 0 for 1 on the old woodshed trivia. We should have done, is it pot or is it a tomato? That's, <laughs> that's With a, all the names. <laughs> that is awesome. Because pot has pretty crazy names. Oh, tomato yeah. plants have pretty crazy names now, too. Yeah. Let's Can we start that next week? Yep. No. <laughs> Maggie, do your research. No. I'll do my research. All right. And that's all we have time for, folks. <laughs> all right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Jed. All right. Jed, guys, nice talking to you, buddy. Definitely. And we're back. Thanks for joining us, Jedi. That was fun. Always a pleasure. And Maggie has a project pointer question lined up, ready to go. Yeah, I do, actually. So. Are you ready? We are. So ready. Um, this is from Penny McGinnis. I'm an author, and I am writing a scene where the characters need to get spray paint off a of cedar shake shingles. What would you use to remove the spray paint? A match. <laughs> that was a joke. Yeah. Spray paint off of cedar shingles. Sand it, but... Whew, that's going to be... It's not impossible, but... Difficult. If you if you weighed out how much you're going to have to sand that versus stripping it and redoing it, you're probably going to redo it. Yeah. Interesting. I, mean, I want to know like what... She's an author that's in the scene. Like, what? what's going on like in the story? Like a wire brush, maybe? Or paint it darker. <laughs> right? Yeah. I think you would have to, yeah, that cedar shakes are tough because they're so fibrous, so porous. All those grooves, like something's going to suck it in. Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's almost like an oil based stain already. Hmm. So interesting the stuff we get. Yeah. Now we're going to have to look in books we read whether or not it makes it into it. Yeah. I. I almost think if you can't, like, make a darker stain, then you just start over. Like, because you could sand that down, like, You'd be sanding forever. You would. And you couldn't get a plane on it because you catch the edges. No, you, yeah. You'd have to. Like I feel like the, this is not the right an the answer she wanted. You know what I would do? I'd get a drill and one of those round wire brush wheels and attack it with that because that's going to scuff it up so it looks, it's going to make it look natural scuffed up. Okay. That's, that would be my answer. But again, you, you're going to be taking out a lot of shake, and eventually you'll probably get down so far that you'll need to replace it. I go with stain it dark. Go <laughs> stain it. Go with the darker paint. Hey, that makes sense. Cost effective. Yeah, but yeah, keep your. That, that's our only project pointer for the day. Um, if you've got questions for us, submit a short video or question to podcast at maincabmasters.com, and we will try to answer it as best we can and as creatively. As we can. And remember, it's free advice, so. Yeah. If the wire brush doesn't work. Yeah, call the cab masses. Re rewrite your scene. <laughs> what a crazy question, though. Yeah. It's awesome. It's fun. Okay. Do you want a question Damn now? graffiti artist. Yes. Yeah. Um, if you weren't doing this job, what would you be doing from Don Grayson? I mean, Chase answers this all the time. What would it be? Uh, what would I be doing? You say the same thing. Oh what yeah, if, well, uh, yeah. I mean, yes. But it, does that mean if I wasn't a carpenter? Yeah. Oh. I don't know. I'd be. That's yeah. a bad answer too. What would you be doing? I wouldn't be using my degree either, still to teach. Yeah. I'd probably be like a bartender. Like, I don't know. Restaurant tour. Restaurant tour. Daddy's to be help, helping all those old ladies. 
Yeah, I'd, I'd still be a handyman. No, nope, you're not allowed to be. You have to be, pick a completely different career. Completely different? Yeah. What was your major at um, COI? I'd be uh, a brewer. I like it. Yeah. It's random. No, I did when I was at COA. I did my you're in, creative. I did my internship with Smutty Nose Brewing down in Portsmouth. I had fun doing that. So interesting, huh? Yeah, kind of use my. I know I would never be in an office. Oh yeah, I had an office like one. I worked for DOT like the first thing job I had, and that just the way I am, I can't sit still. At the time I'd be like, oh my god, like from eight to first break at ten o'clock would be like torture. <laughs> I just couldn't do it, you know, like yeah. I'd be better on an assembly line doing the same thing every day. Boom, boom, boom. Flip the tray. Flip the tray. I'm not good at assembly lines. Remembering many steps is not my See, strength. I, I just like busy work. Yeah. I, I don't think I've ever had a desk job. You never had a desk job? No, I don't think so. Oh, see, I did sales for a lot in some yeah, But you, you, you had something when you broke your leg for a while too, yeah. right? Yeah. Where you couldn't physically move. No, but I, but I, I also, when I worked in Portland, I, I did sales like when I was in Brockton, like yeah. selling like, I worked for Auto Europe selling car rentals and worked for like um, Talk America. Yeah, yeah. And I sold the Ronnie Pope peel, set it and forget it. <laughs> Leave it, believe it. The, Ron, the Ronnie Pope peel oven. Yeah, yeah. But you know, it's funny, like you made, I made, we made pretty good money back then, like, because it was sales based, but you learn so much that you don't realize till later. I bet, I bet. Like how to you know how to close the deal is how to be yeah like when I was doing um auto auto Europe you had to you had to come up with a name right so I was Jonas because I met this guy Jonas and it's like a biblical name so everyone loved me and another thing I remembered is always remember like because you're talking to travel agents like the, you know this isn't a thing anymore but rem- I would write their name down and say Barb I'll find you the car like Barb I'm not sure that car but you say someone's name a lot like that yeah. it gives yeah. you that bond like. There's certain things you learn, like sure, sure, sure. Maggie, I'll take another question. <laughs> Maggie did a good job. You're so annoying. Maggie, even though we're related, I'll keep saying your name. Please stop. <laughs> but yeah, definitely not a desk job. No. Great. What do you want to do when you grow up, Maggie? I don't know. A podcast producer for your uncle and father? <laughs> no. Aw. How would you even talk? executive producer right. of a oh famous podcast <laughs> like, like you know I feel like I feel kind of sorry about for you like I do Fletcher like Fletcher's been to three red sauce games and they're like you couldn't even people I go Fletcher people don't people go to thousands of games and don't see this right oh yeah like you've seen the holy grail right off the top good luck yeah I will not be doing this <laughs> alright we'll get you for a few more years and I'm not gonna be all right, next question. Okay. We just couldn't imagine doing anything else because we love it so much. Yes. That's our answer. On topic and truthful. One second. Is that it for questions? Um, it can be. Yeah. We'll just make that <laughs> as she, it. As Maggie's scrolling through her phone, I've got a good idea that that's hey, it okay. for questions. I'm not I'm not off topic here. What? I'm scrolling under my phone for a purpose. But thank you for the questions. As Maggie looks for last week's trivia question. I have it right here. We will shamelessly promote our new products and one that The new products just keep coming in. They do. You you're right. We are ready for Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We know we're we've got a main cabin masters flask, a main cabin masters reusable shopping tote that Shrinks right down into a convenient pocket-sized pillow. Oh, see, I thought that was like sleeping bag, like one of those ponchos. Like, yeah, I mean, kind of is, right? You see, my problem is, I always forget. Like, I don't actually. Oh, that's pretty. Cool. It's big. All right, fold it. How do you refold it? You just shove it all in. Does it say cabin? Oh, look at that. Yeah. Can I make cabin? Can I make cabin company? I, Boom! I've never seen one of those before. That's awesome. Doing that. Izzy, Michelle, doing all, the, all, all the girls in um, retail, nice job. Yeah. Good job, girls. And last but least, we have a new coffee mug with the pirate flag logo on it. Finally, Chase. Finally. And perfect timing because did you get that email? <laughs> yes. Our buddy Bob is, I, I sent him a text today. I'm like, oh, did you? I like, this is so badass. Excuse my language. He goes, <laughs> I go, but you. <laughs> I made a deal with Chase that I would get that tattooed on my body. I was a week late. And 
Bob, <laughs> one of our, our fans, tattooed this on him. Yeah, he talked to Jen about getting a clean image, and he brought it to his artist and got it on his leg. So, yeah. But looks, looks better on Bob. <laughs> so that is now available. It's got the logo on both sides, a good size ceramic coffee mug. And I believe there is going to be more merchandise with the logo on it as well, including flags. So cool. Yeah. It just Maybe I'll still get a tattoo. That's right. Why not? Want to get one, man? No. Matching? Come on. Oh, that's bonding. You're, you're, no. Yeah, you've got the wrong daughter. Nori will. Yeah, if Nori, Nori was sitting, will. If Nori was sitting there, she'd say yes, please. But not for a while. Yeah, and you go to our website, check out all that good stuff, or come right into the store. Yeah. Shop Kennebec Cabin Company. Shop dot Kennebec. Shop dot Shop dot. Yeah, for all great products. And last week's trivia question answer, or last week's trivia question was wait, 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 wait. Oh. where is. P- Pumpkin Town is now called what? What's yours? Take a guess, Chasey. Chasey. Oxford Hills. I'm going like the Newport area. Can we go? Let's just say an area. So you're saying Oxford Hills area? Yeah, New Gloucester. I'm saying Newport. What are you saying? I know the answer. Oh. What's the answer? Cornish. Cornish. Where's Cornish? It's in Newport. <laughs> is it Cornish? Is it no, Cornish? It's Cornville. Where's Cornish, Maine? <laughs> so you think you know Maine? Don't know. We don't know Maine. We don't know. <laughs> but I know you can get there from Cornish. Here. Of Cornish. Dark. Who would have known? I'm glad they changed the name though. All right. Yeah. Where are you from? Pumpkinville, Maine. Town still got like a fall. I mean, Christmas cold Maine's kind of cool, but Pumpkinville. Yeah. You know. I get. I, I bet Stephen King. Corn. Stephen King would have been born there. Oh, and that brings up we have a fall fest coming up. Oh yeah. At the woodshed. Um, pumpkin carving. Pumpkin carving. Music, music. Apple cider. Yeah. Dash. Yeah. So check out Cabin Master too, maybe. Do we know the date? Probably. The date you'll see the date on the bottom of the screen right now. <laughs> if you don't go to our website, <laughs> or if you're listening, check out the website and we'll have it posted there or our Facebook page. Yeah, we're just getting back into this podcast thing. Okay, are you ready for new trivia question? Yes. What island near Harpswell was overrun first by rats, then by cats? Ooh, that makes sense. Yeah. What came after the cat? Rats, cats, and dogs. Rats, cats, dogs. In uh, near Harpswell, there's a lot of islands down there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, do you think it's one of the two major ones or not? All right. Let's I don't not know. give the answer away. But if you know the answer, email it to podcast podcast at maincabinmasters.com. And if you're the first correct answer, we'll send you something really cool. Yeah. Rats, huh? Rats. Well, thank you, Jedi, for joining us. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you to our sponsors, Nelma, Hero Media Network, Hammond Lumber Company, Kennebec Savings Bank. Thanks, Maggie. Thanks, Ryan. And From the Woodshed, we'll be talking to you. From the Woodshed has been brought to you by Nelma. See the stamp? Trust the quality. Hammond Lumber, your building project partner. Kennebec Savings Bank, helping our local community save, thrive, and grow for over 150 years. And Hero Media Network, connecting small business with new customers. From the Woodshed is a production of Kennebec Cabin Company. See you next time.